Which which years was it like 86, 88? Was it like about the time George H.W. Bush was elected president around that time? I, I think, yeah, that, that's a, I have a big But there wasn't that much hue and cry or backlash Nothing. or negative I mean, reaction. They, they, would, they would grouse about it in their, yeah. their local meetings or something like that, but we never heard a thing. Now, they later, as you may know, amended the you know statute and the Constitution to say there has to be a vote. Yeah, it has to be a vote by the legislature right, right, on right, the recommendations right, right. of the commission. But you don't have any problem with that, do you? No, 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 no. But no. still, who pays attention? Well, they probably, in other words, it gives the legislators, you know, less cover than they used to have because I know, but, they but, have to vote but now. But Bill, you and I both know yep. that one of the huge defects in American government is the colossal neglect the voters lavish upon it. Right. Well, I mean, nobody, nobody in the state of Michigan, you right, included, right. can name all of our statewide elected officials. All because of we elect, statewide. Yeah, because we 7,000 Yeah, we elect too many. We elect too oh my many. My God, we got over 5,000 townships. It's crazy. Offices. No, 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 no. Just take the statewide oh, offices. Oh, just take state. Like, like those boards and commissions. That, that, oh, okay. Come I on. probably could do that. You well, and I maybe are the well, only but, 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 anyway. but, but very right. few, very okay. few. So how long were you on the state officer's compensation? Four years. And that's a term limited, thank goodness. Okay. So when you got off, then Governor Blanchard was defeated by John Engler in 1990. John Engler comes in. Yes. How and long I had were you long, free before he I knew John Engler you. from way back when he was in the state legislature. Right. John and I had gotten along just fine. Yeah. And I, the minute he became governor, I said, now, remember, governor, I don't wish to be appointed to anything. Oh, yes, yes. And every time I would see him, remember, governor, there are a lot of people clawing at you wanting to be appointed to something. I'm not one of those. Oh, I understand. I understand. Fine. Year 2000. February 2000, I get a call from Governor Engler. He said, Peter, I'm going to appoint you to the Michigan Judicial Tenure Commission. I said, Governor, <laughs> remember, this is Peter Fletcher, this lady. You promised me faithfully you would appoint me to nothing. But he said, Peter, I'm desperate. You're the only person I know in the state of Michigan who's not intimidated by judges or attorneys. And that's what I need on that commission. Well, I said, I can't argue with that, but who am I intimidated by? He said, he said I'm hoping on this one occasion you're intimidated by your governor. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> all right, but but remember, you're getting the signed undated resignation, yeah. like every other governor. Yeah, well, I, I'm well, sure I he loved that. I understand, I understand, but so I go on the JTC. It was the worst two years of my life because what we let judges get away with in this state is an absolute disgrace. The first meeting I attended, they're having this hearing relating to a governor in Down River, Down River, Michigan here who's had five sexual harassment complaints filed about his own, from his own staff. He wastes his time playing darts in the back of the room when he's supposed to be conducting court. He's going around to these titty bars in an unmarked car that the police so the police won't harass him and so on. I mean, he was abusing the public trust beyond anything even remotely reasonable. And they were, well, we don't, well, we don't, well, well, we... I said, throw him off. Throw him off. Were you we... the only public member of the of the? No, commission? no, there were two public members. There were two public members. Two. Do you have any help from the other public member? Nope, 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 nope. They're all intimidated <laughs> by the, because there were five judges. There were five judges and the two attorneys sitting there. Okay. Well, I wasn't intimidated. Well, at any rate, throw him off, throw him off. No, no, no. Three years later, three years after I've departed, they finally had to throw him off. And they said, Peter, why didn't we listen to you? Well, I've said I've heard that before. And then, and then we had this, this attorney member who was busy auctioning off his service on the JTC in front of judges. Well, remember, I'm a member of the JTC. He would say that right in open court. And he made a deal with one judge. He made a deal that one judge we apprehended in the men's room in, in an illegal activity in the, in the Metro airport. And so Henry had a, well, I shouldn't give any names, but he gave it. <laughs> but he, he, he went to the judge and he said, no, Henry's I've got this. the attorney. Yeah, yeah, he goes, okay. he goes to this uh, judge and he said, uh, said, uh, I've got this big divorce case in front of you, and I want a half a million dollar fee out of that. If you give me that half a million dollar fee, I'll see two of the JTC goes easy on you, which is exactly what happened. And wow. guess what? The other side found out and raised so much cane that the next time around, Henry was not reelected to the, to the JTC by the state bar. It was so bad. But oh, what do you okay. suppose happened a year later? What? Granholm reappoints him to the board of the Oakland Community College. I mean, folks. Holy Toledo, I really. mean, come on. Money, money, yeah. money, 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 money. The money. members of the JTC became members in what way? I mean, you were appointed Five by Five were Engler. appointed, but see, there, there were, there were the, 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 the various trial uh, courts elect right, right. one of their members. Right. Then there are two appointed by the, uh, two elected by the state bar, and then two appointed by the governor. I got you. Okay. So we were, we were at an automatic disadvantage. Anything like that to discipline any public official should have a majority of public members. They should not have a stacked deck against them. 
How long did you serve on that? Two, uh, just two years. years. Two years. How often did you have to meet? Once a month. And so you had to travel from Ypsilanti up there? No, no, there? Detroit. We went in Detroit. In Detroit. You yep, went, you yep, yep, because that's where most of the activity was. Okay. And, and did you get per diem expenses and that's it? There wasn't I didn't really get anything. anything. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think you were supposed to be paid expenses, but I didn't file for any expenses. And I made them, for the first time, I made them publish a budget. Now, sure, it wasn't a big budget, but I said, look, we're spending public money here. Why aren't we telling the public about it? Oh, oh, they never thought of that. Uh, well, what, what about Engler? What was it? Did you, you must have communicated with the governor at some point saying, Governor, you just don't realize how bad this particular commission is, the situation. I tried to communicate with everybody. But, and, but, but it just, there wasn't any well, reaction. Wasn't were there any other new members that were appointed while you were a member that made things any better? Nope. Nope. Not any better. Nope. 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 Now, wow. I will say good things on behalf of Bill Murphy. Okay. He's on the State Court of Appeals. He right. became the chairman shortly after, and he was very sympathetic and everybody he said, Peter, I understand your frustrations. I know what this means to you and everything, but he said, we're up against a huge, tough um, block of influence, and the, 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 the judges are, mm -hmm. they, I mean, we put on that black robe and we get that gavel out there, and boy, oh boy. It, Let me ask you this. Do you think the fact that judges are elected makes the situation you've found yourself in as a member of the commission harder, tougher, or? Yes, way back in my constitutional convention days with J. Don Lawrence, he tried his best to get a modified Missouri plan here in Michigan, but there were too many attorneys there and they just wouldn't go for it. And we really, that's what we need. They didn't want an appointed judiciary. They no. want an elected nope. judiciary. Yep, 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 because then they can have more direct impact. Every time there's mm -hmm. a campaign, mm -hmm. who's giving money to whom? Mm -hmm. Turning to your political career, you were a Republican National Committeeman for the state of Michigan for how many years? I was there for about five years. I filled out a term for Creighton Holden. Right. So I came in and uh, as of just about the time that uh, Nixon was in the mess and then Gerald Ford becomes president. I'm the National Committeeman right. at the um, convention in 76 out in Kansas, Kansas City. City. And right. that's where we yeah. planted the seed to bring the convention the first time ever a national political convention comes to Detroit in 1980. Right. And that's where Reagan and Bush, the first, right. are nominated president nominated. and vice president. Right. Absolutely. And it was also the beginning of the Tim McBride from Michigan becoming the personal aide to the President of the United States. Right. And then his wife today is the deputy to the president and chief of staff to Laura Bush, all with the Michigan connection all because that, of that convention. Wow. And that Kansas City convention. Yep. Well, and you were very much involved at that convention uh, in the nose counting on delegates for the nomination, weren't Absolutely. you? Reagan, Absolutely. Ford? Absolutely. Well, what, what 19, happened? Well, what? 1976, where the, the Reagan and, and Ford had had these continuing battles all through, you know, the primaries. Right. And it was, and there was a Michigan primary. And they sent the, uh, um, Secretary Austin sent the letter, right. the notification, to the big shots in Washington, and they fortunately forwarded me a copy. And they didn't realize that in Michigan, you had to file an affidavit of candidacy, no matter the who. Ford you campaign. Right, didn't right. They, oh, no, he's the yeah. president. He's automatic yeah. now. I said, no, he's not. Yeah. Oh, no, yes, he. So I called, I called <laughs> Austin's office. I said, is uh, Gerald Ford going to be on the ballot? No, he hasn't filed a affidavit of candidacy. <laughs> so I called the Washington Big Shots. I said, would you please check with your. How far away was the deadline? About 48 hours. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm begging them. I said, he's not going to be on the ballot here. <laughs> oh, and so they checked. They called back in absolute panic. Oh my God! Oh my God! You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. the, the, you go out to Metro Airport tonight, and there'll be a special envelope from Northwest Airlines flight so and so and so and so and so with his affidavit of candidacy. Okay, fine. So I got there. I spent five hours there. They searched the runways. They couldn't find it. They called the president of Northwest they, Airlines. Where is this envelope for the president? Nope. So I called the next morning. I said, Is uh, Gerald Ford still interested in uh, being president? <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. What do you mean? I said I didn't get the affidavit of candidacy. What? 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 You got back there to, 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 uh, to this afternoon, three o'clock. They got another whole set of it. <laughs> so I go back out three o'clock that afternoon, wander around the balls of because I'm supposed to have this particular office. So I finally find this way back in the. And you're doing this all on your own for oh, God's sake? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. what the heck is the matter with these people? <laughs> I know what I know. It's well. unbelievable. Remember, against stupidity, even the gods labor in vain. <laughs> but so I finally find this guy in this back office. His desk is piled high with junk. And I asked, I said, do you have this envelope? Oh, I said, that sounds familiar. And he was shuffling around. I stood there thinking, are all great moments in politics like this? I mean, this is such idiocy. <laughs> yeah. Finally found, oh, yes, here it is. <coughs> right, run, jump in the car, race to Lansing, rush into the governor's office, hand him the envelope. He walks over to, uh, to Austin's office, files with a two-hour spare. It was that wow. close. 
He goes on to win the Michigan primary, gets 59 delegates. He wins in Kansas City by 50 votes. Am oh, I the reason that Gerald Ford was the candidate? There you that go. Year? You I, don't it again. You I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 